Parshas Vahaloscha begins with HaKadosh Baruch Hu instructing Moshe to tell Aaron about the mitzvah of Harulachas Neiros, the mitzvah of lighting the menorah. And there was a mitzvah of lighting the menorah in the Beis HaMikdash. And then, right afterwards, the Torah tells us, Vayas Kain Aaron. Aaron listened to the commandment of a God of Moshe, and he lit the menorah. And it's a famous Rashi, Vahaloscha et Neiros. So Rashi, based on this debris, what is the Pasuk telling me that Aaron, Vayas Kain Aaron? Lahagid Shifko Shel Aaron Shaloshina, the greatness of Aaron, he didn't deviate from the instructions one little bit. So the commentators are bothered by who we're talking about. We're talking about Aaron HaKohen, the great Aaron. Well, you know what? He didn't deviate. He listened to Moshe. Well, would I expect differently? What is like your little child? You tell him to do something. Well, he listened to me. Or you tell your students to do something. Then there could be some warranted shock on them listening. But Aaron HaKohen, like what kind of... What kind of praise is that? Like, why, why would I expect that? So there must be something more going on. So many Mepharshim deal with this question among different um, Achronim and others. So there's a famous explanation in the Rivos Ephraim, Rav Ephraim Greenblatt, that he wants to say, what is the issue here? We all know from Pierre Kiavos, Aaron was an, Aaron was an Ohev Shalom, and a Rodev Shalom. He's one who loved peace and pursued peace. So, what do you mean he loved peace and pursued peace? So we know he used to go ahead and tell the white lies to get people together, to get couples together. He was a person who was involved in always trying to make peace among Kai Yisrael. And at some point out, he was a, he was a contemporary Kirov professional. That that was his job. His job was to go ahead and to get people back together, etc. And, you know, not specifically in from Karina, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but the focus is more on Shalom. So, but basically, he used to try to do things, you know, in order to make people want to um, continue doing it. So that's, today, let's say, today, you have many Bali Chuva places and programs. And therefore, many times, people make the erroneous assumptions that when you're pursuing the ultimate goal of trying to get someone more observant, that you can take liberties with your own mitzvah observance. And therefore, of course, the Torah has to be presented in an attractive and a nice way to try to make it more attractive, not to change the Torah, but to make it in a way where explain the principles of the Torah in a way according to the society you live in. However, nevertheless, there's no special formula. One has to work work on it. So that's what the Pasuk says, Shavu Shina, the greatest of Aaron, that even though, not Aaron per se, Bab Shah Aaron himself didn't feel that way, but in terms of today, many times you're forced with a situation where you're put into, sometimes you have to compromise your own principles, and that's what the greatness of Aaron Shavoshina. And that's why, as Rabbi Yitzhak HaKonah explained, Amara Kohanim and Aaron, that he told the Kohanim, what expense do we say unity? As long as you don't become Tommy making unity. Don't become defiled making unity. And therefore, you have to know how far to go. So the greatness of Aaron Shavoshina, he is... He is meticulous in his own religious observance. The Sfas Emes explains a little differently. Shagoshina is going on the Harukas Haneros, the Haloska, the Eish Haislavas. That we know many times in life we do, we go through roads, we do things without thinking, we daven all the time, we keep Shabbos every week. The many things we do, we just, we don't, we stop thinking about it and we start doing things by habit. And also, like, it begins, you know, when you begin something new, whether it's in Ruchnius or Gashmius, spirituality or physical, we get excited. And then as it goes on, it's hard to keep the excitement. 
In fact, that's how some explain why the Mitzvah Shemitah was used by Har Sinai. Because Har Sinai, the Shemitah is a Mitzvah given once every seven years. So therefore, the Torah is alluding to just like the excitement one has doing a Mitzvah, even though I don't know how excited the farmers were about Shemitah, but the excitement one has in doing a Mitzvah every seven years or once every 19 years, that's the excitement we should have, we should have every day mitzvahs. So that's what the Pasuk's talking about. The greatness of Aaron and Shiloshina, the same way he lit the candles the first time, at the same Hislavos, the same excitement he had for the next times. And the other approach is that we know many times in life, a person like Moshe Rabbeinu, the uh, Mepharsha Mass, why was Moshe... How did, why did he have to be bring up in the king's palace? Why wasn't he brought up among the people? There are many reasons. Some say psychologically, he'd be one of the boys. If he just, then he, people wouldn't have the respect for the person because they know him as a little kid. But many times in life, people you know, and then they move on to a prominent position and they start taking themselves too seriously and they become a different type of person. They don't become the same person they used to be. They become more arrogant and they forget where they came from. And they forget, you know, to give back to the community where, where we got them started, or many stories like that. But that was the greatness of, of Aaron HaKohen. That no matter, even though he's in the privilege of being the Kohen Gadol in the base of Mikdash, nevertheless, the greatness of Aaron Shagoshina, he was the same person. He didn't, let, he didn't let his success get to him, and he still remained the Ohev Shalom, and the road they've shown them. So that, these are some of the explanations. We ask, like, what do you mean, Aaron? Of course he's going to listen to our, what Moshe told them. But no, obviously he would, but it's more than that. The greatness of Aaron and Shagoshina is either Shagoshina, that he didn't compromise his own principles, or he sustained the same level of excitement he did from day one, or his consistent humility that's the great praise of Aaron HaKohen that the Torah lays out that Aaron did not change. Parashas Bahaloska, we read about the mitzvah of Pesach Sheni. That in fact, that's why some of the Rishonim point out why is the Mesech to call Pesachim as opposed to Sukkah. It's not Sukkis, it's Sukkah in the singular. But Psachim is in plural, so one of the reasons I think Tos is in the beginning of Arabi Psachim and other places because of East he writes Arab Pesach, so Arab Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni. So there's a the Torah talks about the concept of Pesach Sheni, because we all know there's a Chiyav Minat Torah for everyone to bring a Pesach Rishon. In fact it's one of the two mitzvahs ase, the failure to perform results in a chi of kares. Usually there's no onesh per se, you have to bring a karban if you don't do, you don't fulfill a positive mitzvah. We reserve those own shit punishments for negative violation because that's a kumbhaase. Usually being shave al tasa doesn't result in an onesh. But karban pesach is one of the two exceptions. The other one is the mitzvah of bris mila. That failure to perform mila, karban pesach results in kare. So one is very particular to fulfill the mitzvah of Pesach Rishon. However, the Torah itself gives us a couple of exceptions to the rule. One who is exempt from the mitzvah of Pesach Rishon. And the Torah tells us someone who is derach rechoka, someone who is far away. It's a major discussion how far is far. And today with modern technology, what does it go by? Does it go by minutes? Does it go by miles? But someone, whatever the distance is, if you're not if you're on the other side at that distance, by I think it's Arab Pesach after Chato, it's a different discussion what time it is, so you are exempt. And similarly, if you are Tame, the one who is, you have to be Tahar to eat the Karban Pesach and be involved. So if you're Tame and Derech the Torah singles out those two as exceptions to the rule. What about if you're Ona Hanas? <coughs> Whatever, it's not one of the two, but you're under duress, it's something out of your control. So, Rabbi Hanan Wasserman says, it's simple. One who is onus is chayev. He thinks he has a gemara and that no one argues on. There's someone who is onus, 
and he misses Pesach Rishon, he would be Chayev in Pesach Shein. He, he, he points out there's a whole Machlokas Achronim regarding Tefillah, that we all know there's a concept of Tashlumen, that we say the statute of limitation ends after the next Tefillah. Some Rishonim say it lasts for a long time. In fact, Rabbi Shlomo Zalman has an interesting discussion by Asher Yatsar. Let's say someone becomes a Ger, so, or, you know, or let's say a Katan, a, you know, how many, you know, how long could you still make the Asher Yatsar? Are you high up to make up? What's well, someone even was a Jew? He didn't make an Asher Yatsar. He's about Shuva. Do you have to make up for 20 years? You know, so we don't assume that way, but that's a discussion of Shkomo Zalman. So there's a discussion by Tefillah. We say if you, if you remember the next Tefillah, you can make up Tashkumen as long as you're Bishogeg, if it's unintentional. And therefore, you, that's all we do. If you miss two Tefillahs, it's over. So what happens if you're honest? For some reason, you didn't have a mincha, but it was out of your control. So, it's a machokis achronim, whether we say there's tashlumen regarding someone who is honest. Meaning, maybe if you're honest, you're not even obligated to make it up. It's not, it's not worse oh. than shogeg, but maybe there's no... Tashlumen means I'm chayev, I couldn't do it, and now I have to make it up. So, so Rav Hanan claims that he thinks that opinion is a mistake. It's an explicit Gemara regarding um, Pesach Sheini. He thinks Onus, one who is Onus, is considered Chayev, and it's just, and he does have a Chayev Tashlumen, and he wouldn't have to. He would, in our case here, he wouldn't be Chayev. So Derech Rachol Katami, and according to Rabbi Khan, everyone agrees to Onus. So yeah. Would an Onin also fall in the category of Onus? Very good. We'll get to Onin. But even uh, just attending a funeral also be part of that. Simply attending the funeral of. Uh, of like a, a very loved rabbi. Would be part of what? Being exempted from... You mean if you think you went to a funeral and you couldn't dive in, you right. mean? I mean, assuming, that, assuming you know, it was a May Smith or it's a case where, let's say, you know, it was, the, it, it was Rebbe, you know, then we, that it's could... Certainly being an owner, yes. Yeah, that, that's that's the Gemara, right. yeah, that even might be Osik for Mitzvah Pato, and I mean, the Gemara in Sukkot talks about, oh. you know, well, yes, you're being Ola Regal, you're visiting your Rebbe, yeah, so it might not... Yeah, it could be either a similar principle of that onus. It could be that if you're involved in one mitzvah, you're exempt from another mitzvah. So, so the Gemara has a discussion between Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Nussin and Rebbe. What is the nature of the din of Pesach Sheni? Usually we need to go to the Achronim and the Rishonim for the Lamdis. The Gemara gives it to us. The Gemara wants to know, is Pesach Sheni a regel b'fnei atzmo? That's Rebbe's opinion that it's considered an independent holiday. Of course, no one says it's an independent holiday that if you did Pesach Rishon, Yechayim and Pesach Sheni. No, there's no opinion like that. But within Pesach Sheni, whether it's considered a regal b'fnei atzmo, or it's only Tashlumin L'Rishon, or it's only that there's no independent mitzvah Pesach Sheni, one who was Chayim and Pesach Rishon and couldn't do it for being Derech Rechoka, or Tami, according to Rabbi Chad and Anas, so then Yechayim. But it's not an independent, there's no independent day of Pesach Sheni. My nafkamina, what's the nafkamina, whether I say Pesach Sheni is considered regal b'fnei atzmo, or is it a tashlum in Lurishon? So the Gemara gives us two nafkaminas. A katan shehigdio, let's say someone becomes bar mitzvah ben Pesach Rishon ben Pesach Sheni. On Pesach Rishon, he was a katan. So a katan is exempt from all mitzvahs. So therefore, would it be chayev to bring a carbon on Pesach Sheini? And the second example is a ger sheniskayer, someone who becomes a convert in the middle of Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheini, would a ger be chayev in Pesach Sheini? So the Gemara says, according to Rebbe, who says it's a regal b'fneiatzmo for those who haven't brought, so then he's chayev. The fact that a ger and a katan weren't obligated in the midst of Pesach Rishon is academic. It's a regal b'fnei atzmo. Come Pesach Sheni, both a katan and a ger would be chayev to bring a Pesach Sheni. And according to the opinion of Rav Nassan, that is Tashlum and Rishon, a katan and a ger would be pata, because since they weren't chayev, and pes- Tashlum means I'm chayev to daven now, or I'm chayev in this mitzvah, I couldn't do it for some reason. I'm shogeg, let's say, let's say by tefillah. So I'm shogeg by tefillah, so therefore I, I can make it up the next tefillah. So there's a din by, by Pesach Sheni as well. 
that if a person wasn't chayev, so, so that's, the, that's what the Gemara says, according to Rebbe, a ger and a kata will be chayev in Pesach Sheini. And according to Reb Nassim, who holds his tashlum and l'rishon, so I was never chayev, so there's no reason to make it up. That's the tushitas in the Gemara. Comes along the Nitziv, and he wants to say there's a third sheet in the Sifre. The Gemara doesn't quote the Shita, but the Sif wants to say there's a third Shita. This, this whole third Shita only is going within Rav Nassim. According to Rabbi, it's a Rebbe of there's nothing to talk about, the Chayev. But according to the Sif, there's a third Shita, that they want to make a distinction between a Katan and a Ger. So again, the Gemara just tells us, uh, Rebbe says to both Chayev, a Katan and a Ger, yes. if they become a convert between Pesach Rish and Pesach Sheni, a Katan becomes a Gadol, Chayev, and Rav Nassim says to Pater. The Ziv quotes the third sheet in the Zifri that, you, that, a, that a Ger Shen is Chayev is Pater, even in Pesach Rish and Pesach Sheni, mm-hmm. but a Katan is Chayev. So what's the distinction that the Ziv is making between a Katan? Because a Katan Shen Higdiel is Chayev on Pesach Sheni. A ger shen is kayer is pater. So the tziv says because there's a fundamental difference between a katan and a ger. It's true that the both pater min Torah from bringing the Pesach Rishon, but a ger is pater wagamre. It wasn't even Jewish at all. There wasn't even any type of chiyav. Regarding a katan, there's a chiyav chinach midrabanan. It's a, it's a, a famous machlok, it's Rashi and the Ramban, who the chiyav chinach is on whether it's on the parent or on the child. So we'll work with on the child. It's a chi of the Rabbanan. So according to the katan, according to the Nitziv, that a, a katan would be chayev in Pesach Sheni because he had a chi of chinach, even though he wasn't chayev in Torah, but there was some type of chi of, so therefore that's a distinction that Siv makes between um, a katan and a ger. And based on this, or well not based on this, but the Rambam seems to go with this, um, this because the Rambam, when he talks about the case of Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni, so he writes the obvious, you know, one who, a Tamei Derech Rechoka, one who is exempt, um, it, you know, it depends on this Machok, his Rebbe and Rav Nassan, and we go baby, basically with Rebbe that, you're, that it's a Rego Bethlehem Yatzmo, and then he writes, what about the following case? Let's say a Katan brought a Pesach Rishon. He was included in the Chabura. Everyone agrees a Katan is exempt. But let's say you included the katan, the 12 and a half year old son, you included in the Karban Pesach. Now what? So the Rambam writes, even though a katan is patr, but if he's included in the Pesach Rishon, he is exempt from the Pesach Sheni. So everyone jumps on the Rambam. Where does the Rambam get this from? How could it be included? So the Ziv writes, this is so here. The Ziv writes that uh, since a katan has a chi of chinach, so it's enough it ties into our issue we discussed a couple of weeks ago, it was the last week, about a cut in Shehigdio by Svira. Yeah. It's the same we saw that the, that, that the, the Tziv is writing, and this would end, according to the Tziv, a cut in can continue counting with the bracha on Svira, because every, cause the, the Tziv is writing, the mice of a cut in counts, even though he's part of now, but it can be mitzvah later, la'achar zman. That's the yisod of the tziv. That even though a katan is only he's chayim mitzvah now, but that works. That when he becomes chayim in the middle of the mitzvah, in other words, he's in the middle of the mitzvah of sviras omer, any mitzvah we're talking about, or even then pesach rishon pesach, he doesn't become chayim until he becomes by mitzvah in the middle of pesach rishon. Nevertheless, the mice of a katan counts. In fact, that's what the tziv writes regarding the shaila of um, a katan. He writes. Let's say someone is a katan, you know, he's becoming bar mitzvah, and he had a big meal before, he wanted to get his last meal in before he became bar mitzvah. So he had a big meal, and let's assume he even did bench. He, he had enough food that he has a kadei sevia, and now he becomes bar mitzvah. So Rabbi Kiva Eger raises the following shaila, is he chayev in benching now? When he's chayev, he benched. Because, no, but so what? When he benched, he was only chayev midrabanan. So now the chi of the vechalt of the sabbata kicks in when he becomes 13. So maybe now, the question is: Is the benching he did midrabanan count? So that Rabbi Kiva Eger leaves the sarachian, but in its, based on the nitziv, the nitziv would say that it's a go. That the mice of a katan counts as when he. This like it works for Pes, like the Rambam writes that it works for Pesach Rishon to exempt you from Pesach Sheni. The nitziv would write it by here, and also Avi's case. What about an onain? A similar shaila. An onain is someone who lost a, 
a loved one, it's, bef- it's after the death, but before the funeral. So an onen is putter min ha mitzvah. So the machlokas Rashi and Tos is whether he's putter, but, it, but if he's up to it, he could volunteer mitzvahs. Or according to Tos, he's usher to do mitzvahs. How's covered amaze? We passed in like Tos, it's usher for an onen to do mitzvahs. So an onen, but there's no mitzvah for an onen to fast. He has to eat. I mean, should he? Um, however, it's very, you know, no the, the brachas. It's very uncomfortable. Some say you just listen to someone else's hamotzi or whatever, but it's an, you know, you're not used to eating without brachas, but that's the halacha. So what happens now? He comes back from the funeral. He had a nice big meal. When he was an one and he's still kadei sevia. He's still full from his meal. So that's a shalit. Would an one be chayev? And be, what calls him on his one is exempt. In fact, it's us of him to do mitzvahs. But when he gets back after the kfura, is he chayev to bench now? So that's also the discussion in, in Rabbi Kiva Eger in the Akronim, the same issue here, because do I, so that's the, that gets into what the nature of the dinner of an onin is, what Avi was asking. Do I say an onin was chayev, except that, that, he's, that you know, he couldn't do the, he couldn't bench it there for now that he can, so he's chayev? Or do I say, no, an onin is exempt from mitzvahs totally, and therefore, there's no chiyav, so there's no tashlum. That's another, a further discussion in the Akronim. It's all the same miso. In fact, in the Tziv writes, and it's popular in different camps, but it's true all over. They have campaigns in camp where they have the children, they teach the children how to put on tzitzis, and, and which is a good thing. And the katan puts on his own tzitzis. The Tziv raises, what happens if he becomes a gadol? Could he still wear those tzitzis when he taught it as a katan? Because we know Tosis writes, or we know Tom writes, you have to be a bark shira. He writes it not only by sittas, but by tefillin. Someone has to be chayib in the mitzvah in order to do it. A woman, he says, can't do, you know, we, not everyone agrees. That's why people, I'm, you know, there's a discussion. Yeah, I, mean, I know there's different parts. That's the lishma, but if the man turns on the machine. But Rabbi Al Tom writes, a woman can't do it because she's not chayib in the mitzvah. So that's a shayla, a katan who made sittas. So it's no shayla. While he's a katan, of course he can wear them because even manushach, if he's chayib, he's chayib, if he's putter, he's putter. But the tziv has a big hit, it's not everyone agrees to that a cotton can continue wearing the sitzis. Why? Because even though he is putter, but since he did the mice of a cotton counts, and he could be mitzvah later when he becomes chayev um, in the mitzvah sitzis. And the tzib writes, his disod, it's based on the Rambam, that the Rambam writes, even though a cotton is, is putter in Pesach Sheni, but if he's included in the Chabura, he's exempt from Pesach Sheni. He doesn't have, and so to, that's his disod here by sitzis, etc. And, and that's the issue of the O name. So, that, so that's in the Tziv third sheet. So we have the, the Gemara is clear that according to Rebbe, he holds it to Regal with Neyatzmo, so a gear and a cut in his Chayev. According to Rav Nassan, it is Tashlum and Lurishon. So therefore, he, since they were exempt on Pesach Rishon, so there's no need to bring a Karban on Pesach Sheini. But in the Tziv, wants to make a distinction between a gear and a cut on. A gear was totally putter. So there's no chi of tashlumin, so he's part of it. A katun who has a uschayim midin chinach, he would be chayim. In fact, this issue is a famous machlokus to Maram Ruhrenberg and the Rush regarding a katun shehigdiel toch shloshim. We know there's a lach of shiva. You lose one of your loved ones, so you're chayim in shiva. A katun is exempt from shiva, except because, you know, midin chinach, we don't, ain't chinach, there's a shach right. We're not machanach the kids in Avelis. It's a separate shock. So let's say a katan grows up, becomes a gadol tok shloshim, in the middle of shloshim. So what's the halacha? So there's halacha in Yeridea in, in Gemara Moe Katan. It's something called a shmua krova and a shmua rachoka. A shmua, you hear? Let's say you hear the news that one of your loved ones died tok shloshim. The halacha is Yechayev in Avelis, Yechayev in Shiva. If you hold Shmua Rachok, if you hear after 30 days, so your pat is a din, you do, um, you, do you know, you, you, you do one day, you do like a um, mix of Sayom, there's a, so that's it, so, so that's a, mal, so, the, so, the, so in fact, and, and, and there's a further Machok is people make the mistake, they tell the person on day 30 or before day 30, if, you, if they hear before day 30, the, in fact, because that's what we showed them to talk about, let's say someone, is going to a wedding and you know that his, his loved one passed away and he doesn't know about it and there's, no, and there's no reason to tell him right now 
So there's no mitzvah telling him. The, the chi of Aveo only begins if you have the idea. If you don't know about it, so the, the guy might be upset at you and might kill you for not telling him, but you know what? Uh, no, it's like the same thing as a person has the, uh, in the, in the who has saras. The coin, go, the coin doesn't go and tell him if he knows it's within the uh, days of Shiva, uh, of uh, Yemei and Mishta. It's something that's like joyful for that person. Yeah, so in general, yeah, it's not discriminated to avail it, but there's a din of idea. So therefore, we have, so the Tamachok is whether you go by 30 days from the death or 30 days from the burial. So again, so therefore, to some reason, we'll say it's in the burial. So if you tell someone 30 days after he's still, will be chayev. A lot of times you do it if you have, let's say, a 95-year-old brother. And, you, and it's too much for him to keep Shiva and he's sick and so you, the doctor tell him after 30 days so he only has to keep, you know, like, like one day. So that's, that's a machok, it's the Maram Rimberg and the rush, if you become a katan, tok shoshim. So the Maram Rimberg says Yechayev in Shiva, that if, it, if, you, if, if you become a god of tok shoshim Yechayev, you know, and the rush is cholik, but, but that's the sheet of the Maram. We see that, that like the Tziv was saying, that, that even though he was exempt in the beginning, when it happened, if you become chayev later on, so therefore you're still chayev in the halacha. So that's the Nitzv's distinction by Pesach Rishon and Pesach Tehri, calling a cut and a gear. We'll discuss the issue of whether one should take Tachanun on Pesach Sheni or not. The Minig Ashkenaz is to say Tachanun on Pesach Sheni. And the Minig Svar is not. Let's try to understand the Minig Ashkenaz. Why would you say Tachanun? And the Svarim, why wouldn't you? So there's a interesting uh, Minchas Chinuch. The Minchas Chinuch, and apparently he wrote it at different times. He says, I'm sitting here between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni, and I'm thinking, you know what? What would be the halacha if in between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni the Beis HaMiktosh was rebuilt? Would one be obligated to bring a Pesach Sheni? So in one place he quotes the Machokis in the Rishama. We'll come back to the Bavli quotes. But the Rishama he quotes the Machokis in the Yerushalmi whether one would be obligated in Pesach Rishon, whether one would be obligated in Pesach Sheni or not. What's the Nekudas HaMachogos? What's the issue on whether one would be obligated to bring a Pesach Sheni if the base had been rebuilt? So perhaps it's dependent on a Machogos, on an issue we discussed in the past regarding Svira to Omer. There's a major machokis we shown him regarding Sviras Omer Bizman Hazeh, where the Sviras Omer is Daraisa or Durabanan. Rambam holds it's Daraisa, other we shown him Durabanan. So many learn the Nakuda that the question is whether Sviras Omer and Carbon Omer are one mitz are connected or independent. If Sviras Omer is linked to the carbon omer. So today we no longer have a carbon omer, so Sphira will only be Durabanan. If you assume Sphira and, carb and the carbon omer are two independent mitzvahs, so there'd be no reason to say Sphira is not the rice of today. So that's what it seems to be telling you on whether if you hold that Sphira is independent mitzvah, so Sphira should be even the rice of today. If you hold it connected to the carbon, it should be Durabanan. But Rav Chaim points out in the Rambam, you can't give this shot because the Rambam, you can always bring a geographical proof from the Rambam. Where the Rambam puts something in it will depend on what is the nature of the mitzvah. So the Rambam, who clearly writes, Sviris Omer is biblical even today, he puts the laws of Sviris Omer in Hilchas Tamidin Umusafim, the Hilchas Karbana. So clearly, the Rambam's opinion is there's a link between Svira and Karbana, and yet the Rambam still holds it's biblical. So how could that be? It seems to be a Gemara in Menachas, it seems to say that Bizman Azeh, it's a Zechil Amikdash. The Pashas Gemara is, everyone agrees, it's a Zechil Amikdash. The issue is, how much of a Zechil do you need? whether you count days and weeks the same way you counted 
bizman and based on mikdash kayim. Well, no, it's enough to count yamim. But the way Rashi learns and many we shown him that everyone holds his draw banan. All right, so what does the Rambam do with that Kamara? So if you're a real brisker, it's a difficult Kamara. But what's Pshat in the Rambam? So Rav Chaim points out this is really a machlokas hasugyas. That there's a machlokas we have in the Gemara, we shown him what is the sanct, what is the status of there's a machlokas, a similar machlokas regarding Kedusha's Eretz as well, whether Kedusha Lashaisa or Kedusha Liyasilava was it temporary or is it permanent regarding the time of Yoshua during the original conquest and later on Bizman Esther that's a different Machokas Machokas Rambam Raivet but over here by Kedusha Samich is also Machokas Rambam Raivet what the Machokas is is up for discussion but so the Rambam Shita is that Kedusha Samikdash, even Bizman Hazer, still applies. And that's why the Isser of Shchut Echutz, usually the only time there's an Isser to bring Karbanos outside the Beis Hamikdash is when you can bring in the Beis Hamikdash. When the Beis Hamikdash is destroyed, you can't bring a Karban, so there's no Isser Bamas. So the Ramam Shita is that Bizman Hazer. The Kedusha Samikdash is intact because the Shechina ain't a betela. The Shechina can't be nullified. You can knock down the walls, but you can't take away the Divine Presence. The Ravid holds that since Ezra knew the Ruach HaKodesh, that it was only going to be a temporary Beit Samikdash, so therefore, or because, you know, because the the Ravid writes Venigo Ali, it seems at first the Ravid saying, and how do I know it? Because God told me. Raiva was a big Makubal. And he says, when you're early, that it was, when Ezra built it, it was only temporary because he knew it was going to be destroyed. Others, Rav Cook, and others say, no, it's the Niglo Lo. And it appeared to him, it appeared to Ezra, and perhaps as well to Shlomo, that when they built the Beis Amikdash, they knew it would only be per- sent temporary to the F4, the Kedusha was only. So that's the whole discussion. How could you. Could you have something which is Kedusha Dizbichal for a temporary time period or not? But either way, the point is the Rambam disagrees and says Kedusha Samikdash applies today. So really according to the Rambam, so the Rechaim says like this. So let's say Bisban Beis Samikdash Kayam. They brought the carb, they brought the carbon Omer in the morning and they counted Svira at night. So you're saying, let's say, Bizman Beit Samik Tashkayim, they, for whatever reason, they forgot to bring the Karban Omer. They couldn't bring the Karban Omer. Does that mean the Tzvira wasn't a Raisa? No. As long as you count Tzvira on the condition you're planning on bringing the Karban Omer tomorrow, potentially you get, whether you actually bring it or not, it's not relevant because you're not even bringing it to the next day. So when you're counting now, it's still the Raisa. That's what Rav Chaim says. The Ramah holds Kedusha Samikdash is the Raisa. So therefore, when I count Svira, I have a mind to bring the carbon over tomorrow. I technicalities. Kohanim Atame, Big Day Kohuna. We don't know the Makam is back. Whatever the issues are in bringing Karbanos today, that prevents us. But fundamentally, so that's the Ramam Sheet is, you could hold Svira to Omer is connected to the carbon Omer and still be the Raisa. So perhaps this issue of Rav Chaim, maybe that's the Machok is here regarding Pesach Sheni. But if you hold this no Kedushas HaMikdash, so then obviously there was no Chiyav to bring a Pesach Rishon. So if there was no Chiyav, there shouldn't be any Tashvumen. However, if you hold that There is Kedusha Samikdash, or is Chayev. So I was Chayev, and I was just an honest. So if it's Chayev and just an honest, and then come Pesach Sheni, I'm Chayev, because that's the Gemara, as Rabbi Hanan points out. That someone who's honest, Ben Pesach Rishon, or Pesach Sheni, according to everybody, which, whichever sheet, even according to Rav Nassan, who says it's Tashlum Rishon, you'd be Chayev. So perhaps that's in the Kud in Yerushalmi, whether 
there was if there's kedusha according to Rebbe, perhaps it's a regal but neyatsmo. So then it shouldn't make a difference if Yechayev. If it's Pesach Shani Yechayev, and you didn't bring a Pesach Rishon, so then maybe you should. But regarding Rav Nassim Shita, whether it's Tashum or Rishon, you can make that distinction like the Nitziv wrote the third Shita. You make the difference between a Katan and a Gear. So either way, that's um, that's the Minchas Sinek Yerushalayim. However, the Minchas Sinek writes in another place, it should be simple. The answer is no. That if the base of Mikdash is rebuilt, Ben Pesach Rishon, Ben Pesach Shani, it's a Mefurish Gemara that no, we do not bring a carbon we don't, on Pesach Shani. Why? Because the Minchas Chinech writes based on the Gemara in Pesachim, I think that's Pei, and the Rambam in Hilchus, I think Carbon Pesach, Berg Zion writes it, that Pesach Sheni is not a calendaric day. It's not a day on the calendar. Yudalit Iyar. I mean, it falls out on Yudalit Iyar, but it's not. Because what does the Gemara say? The only time Yechayev, the only time Kaiso is Chayev and Pesach Sheni is if the only time you have a concept of Pesach Sheni is if Rove Kaiso when is Pesach Sheni? 30 days after the majority of the Jewish people brought the Karban Pesach B'Tahara. If the majority of the Jewish people brought the Karban Pesach Rishon B'Tahara, then you have a concept of Pesach Sheni. If only me had brought them B'Tahara, if a minority brought them B'Tahara or Rode brought them B'Tuma, there is no Pesach Sheni. So there's nothing to do with it. The Mechanisms are going to everybody. Whether it's Rabbi Rav Nassan, since Kaito did not bring Pesach Rishon, so there is no concept of Pesach Sheni. Pesach Sheni doesn't exist. Bizman has there. And hence, that's the Minag Ashkenaz, that there is no Pesach Sheni today. And therefore, of course, you say, Tachanan, I, what is this? And all the hell, maybe it's a Zecher. That with the Zecher, that when the Beis HaMikdash was up, and Rov Kaito bought the Karman Pesach Rishon, but Tahara, so 30 days later would have been Pesach Sheini, so as a Zecher, to the way it was in the Beis HaMikdash, uh, we don't say uh, Tachanah. The Gemara in Sachim, based on the Pasuk in Bahaloscha, tells us that those who were not able to bring a carbon on Pesach Rishon a Tame or Derek Rakhoka, someone who was Tame, so they couldn't be involved with the carbon Pesach Rishon, or someone Derek Rakhoka was far away, they have an obligation to bring a carbon on Pesach Sheni. So the Gemara talks about a Machokas in Sama Gimel Amin Aleph and Sachim, a Machokas between Rebbe and Reb Nasan. What is the nature of the obligation of Pesach Sheni? So Rebbe says, it's a regal b'vnei one who, one who is a Tame and Derach Rechoka, and they can't bring a carbon on Pesach Rishon, a Chayev to bring one on Pesach Sheni. And Reb Nassim says, also a Tame and Derach Rechoka, who can't bring a carbon on Pesach Rishon, you have to bring a carbon on Pesach Sheni. Why? Because Tashlumin Urishon. Because since you were obligated to bring a carbon, but you couldn't, you were exempt because of Tami and Derech Rochoka. So therefore, the Torah requires you to bring a carbon on Pesach Sheni as a Tashlumin. Mainath Gamina, what is the practical difference between Rebbe and Rav Nassim? Everyone agrees that Tami and Derech Rochoka. On the Pesach Rishon is Chayev to bring a carbon on Pesach Sheni. So, what's the Nafkamina? So the Gemara tells us a Gersh and a Skyer and a Katan Shehigdiel, a convert who converts between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni, is he Chayev to bring a carbon on Pesach Sheni? 
So according to Rebbe, it's a regular with Neyatsmo. So since he didn't bring one on Pesach, we shown his Chayab to bring one on Pesach Sheni. But according to Rav Nassim, it's Tashlum and Rishon. He wasn't Chayab, he wasn't even a Jew. So he would be exempt. And same thing with Akatsan, the Gemara says. According to Rebbe, it's a regular with Neyatsmo, he'd be Chayab. According to Rav Nassim, it's Tashlum and Le- it's, ta- it's a Tashlum and Rishon, it's Tashlum and if you miss Pesach Rishon, so then a cousin who was exempt, he is Pesach. That's what the Gemara says, that we have, um, that we have two sheets, Rebbe and Rav Nassan, and the Nafkamina is whether a Ger and Iskaya or a Katan Shehigdil and Pesach Rishon and Pesach Shani, whether the Chayev and to bring a carbon of pest suction. If you hold it to regular with the Yatsmo, yes. If you hold it to a touch woman, no. Comes on the sieve based on a diac and the sifri, he wants to say there's a third shita within Rav Nassan. Rav Nassan, the Gemara, the Awa Gersa, he equates a Gersh and a Skyr and a Kutta and Shehigdia. Then the sieve based on the sifri, wants to make a distinction between those two, that the sifri would hold that a uh, Gersh and his Kayer, he's putter from a carbon on Pesach Shani, while a Katan is Chayev. Why? Because a Ger on Pesach Rishon is no Shaykhis to the Pesach Rishon. So it's not Shaykh Tashlumen, because there's nothing to make up, you're already even Jewish. But a Katan, even though he's Chayev, he's putter min Torah, but rabbinically speaking, out he is obligated to bring, he's obligated in Mitzvah. So even though, the since, he was Chayev, big, well, he was a Katan. He's Chayev, so the Chayev is Chal on the, on, well, he was a Katan, but Acher is Man. That even though at the time when he was Chayev, he was a Katan, nevertheless, since he becomes Chayev, Acher is Man, we see the Chayev of a Katan could be Chal Acher. In fact, that's the famous Machokas, the Maram, Rutenberg, and the Rush regarding Avelis. There's a machokas among the Ka'onim whether there is Chinuch on Avelis. We know there's Chinuch by all mitzvahs, but it's a machokas in the Ka'onim, and we ask and there is no Chinuch by Avelis. However, a katan is chayev to rip Kriya, because as the Gemara says, Avelis Luchud and Kriya Luchud. So the Gemara talks about the concept of a Shmua Krova and a Shmua Rechoka. So if you hear within the first 30 days, it's a Machok is whether it's the first 30 days from Kvura or Misa, but if you hear within the first 30 days, it's a Shmua Krova, it's the idea that's Machai of you, and therefore you have to do Shiva and Shoshim. But if you hear after 30 days, it's just a Shmua Rechoka, you just have to do um, one day. So the Gemara talks about that. Let's say someone's taking this child, this person, to this wedding, and he knows the person died. His he knows his father died, but the person doesn't know. So there's no, he's not chayiv and avelis, and it's okay. You could take him, whether it's a good thing or not. It's a separate discussion. But it's the idea of avelis which is mechayev. So a shmua krova within 30 days, so halacha kadivah mekel ba'avelis, that we go wakula, depending on what the case is. However, if it's after 30 days, so eno no heges ala yom echad bilvad. And even that, excuse me, even that we chisel down, even that we say mixes a yom kakula, you don't have to do a full day. And the machabra quotes in the Ramban, even though we don't usually say mixes halayla, Kalila, but for Shemur Rechoka, we say even sitting a little bit at night. So the Maram Rurenberg wants to say, what about if a Katan Shehi, so a Katan is Pater from Avelis. So what about if he becomes a Gadol Tosh Shloshim? So the Maram Rurenberg claims, so he's like a Shemua Krova, and he'd be Chayev, because he says, even though at the time of the Stima Sagolel, he was Pater, he was only Chayim, but he was Chayim Midrabanan. 
in general, chinuch is that shaykh to the mitzvah, even though the some go say there's no mitzvah, uh, there's no chinuch and avelus, but he was still involved. He was still affiliated with the associated with the mitzvah. So the Maram Ruinberg writes that even though he's only a katan at the time of the kfura, nevertheless he could be chayav acharz. I mean, he can't be chayav at the kfura because he's a katan. But when he becomes a gadol, 20 days later, he's chayav l'achaz man. And the rush disagrees and says, a katan is not chayav. And I think we're passing like the Maram in Rutenberg. If, he, if a katan shehigdi al to so it's a din of shmua krova. So one of the rayas they want to bring to support the Maram in is it's a Gemara in Yavamas about a katan who becomes chayav in the, in the middle of Shabbos. Let's say a uh, Eleven o'clock in the morning, he becomes thirteen. That's it. So how could that be? So some say may ace to go twenty four hours and it goes by that. But Pashtis, it begins at the beginning of Shabbos, not in the middle. So but so the Maharam Rumor wants to write that the the Knesset Hayom of Shabbos is Mechai of him, even though at the time of Shabbos he was only he was still a Kata and he didn't become a Gado until eleven AM. But the Knesset of Shabbos is Mechayim is a Katan, and he becomes Chayim Wa'achaz Man at 11 a.m. And the Rosh disagrees and says every moment of Shabbos, the, the Gemara says a Katan, never has agreed to the Gemara, the Gemara says a Katan is Chayim, the Rosh would say because every moment of Shabbos has its own Chayim, it's not, it's not a din of Knesset, Knesset Hayom. So either way, so based on that's what the so what the, the Maram Rumber writes by a cut and by a veilus. That's what the Siv writes here that a cut and since even though he was put to in a Torah on Pesach Rishon, but he was Chayav Mitrabanan, so therefore he could be Chayav Laachas Man. So that's regarding that's regarding someone who is Tame and Derech Rucholka. So he's put to in Pesach Rishon and he's Chayav in Pesach Sheni. Rav Hanan raises, what about someone who is honest? He's not a derech or he's, he's honest. He's under duress. It's impossible for him to um, go ahead and um, bring the Pesach Rishon. As he chayev in Pesach Sheni. So there's a machokis in the Achronim between the Taz and the Prisha regarding Tefillah. That if a person, we know by Shogeg there is Tashlumen. If you're amazed that there's no Tashlumen, what about if you're honest? So it's a machok is taz in the prisha. So the Rav Hanan writes, that's a mistake. Everybody agrees, everyone should agree, that there is tashlum in Baitzvila, because how do we know? Because he is a, a, a furish Gemara regarding Pesach Sheni, that the Gemara talks about one who is honest on Pesach Rishon, he's chayev, I think, Pesachim Samach Beis, of a Beis, one who is honest on Pesach Rishon, is chayev on Pesach Sheni. The Gemara doesn't go into whether whether it's Rebbe or Nazan implying everyone, even Reb Nazan agrees it's Tashlumin, even he agrees that he's that he's Chayev. So in the one he says they're wrong, whoever Shita is that by Tzfila there is no Tashlumin. And he says anyway, it's not even a case of honest because honest means I'm I'm honest from beginning to end. I missed the Hosman Mincha. But here anyway even if I was on this on Pesach Rishon, but right now, on Pesach Sheni, if I could do it, so I'm Chayef. So Rav Ochanan, this writes, it's a Mils of the Pshita, it's a Mephorish Gemara, if you become a Gadol, if you're an Anus, between Pesach Rishon and Pesach Sheni, you know, if you're an Anus on Pesach Rishon, you're Chayef on Pesach Sheni. In fact, there's a whole discussion of Rabbi Yosef Engel in general, when the, when we have a print of Onus Rachman Patre, what does it mean, Patre? You're exempt. If you do, if 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 you, have, if you can't do something, it's out of your control. You put the from the you no longer chayiv anymore. Oh no, you still chayiv in the mitzvah, except there is no onish. My naf kamina. So that's what Rabbi Rabbi Yosef Engel writes. If you mechayiv, if you put the from the chayiv, so you are never mechayiv. So therefore, there's no tashlumin. If you hold your put the from the onish, but but the chayiv is there, so there is tashlumin. In fact, that's the whole Rav Yosef Engel wants to make a distinction. Is the Tosis and Baba Basu Daf Yud Gimel, 
where Rabbi Yosef Engel wants to explain based on a based on the Bali Tosfos, he wants to make a distinction. We only say Onis Rachmana Pache when it comes to mitzvahs but Adam Lamakom. When it comes to mitzvahs but Adam Chaveiro, it's result oriented. One would be Chayev. So the discussion over there in the Tosfos there is regarding the mitzvah Puravu versus the mitzvah of Shabbos or Shabbos Yisera, not to leave the world desolate. So. The Rav Yosef Engel writes, Puravu is a mitzvah b'edam l'makom, so then you can say, on is Rachman apatre. But what Shabbos is there is a mitzvah is b'edam l'chaveiro, so you wouldn't be exempt. What's, why is Puravu a mitzvah b'edam l'makom? Because that's to make someone, to train people to become Jewish and to live a life of Jewish values, you have children. Well, with Shabbos, that's just to populate the world. That's b'edam l'chaveiro. At one point, Puravu is for everyone, but when that here Sinai, the mitzvah was changed. The Gemara and Sanhedrin goes into that. So we see Puravu is but I don't makom. So then you could say Onis Rachman Apatre, but by Vashev Esiseru, which is Vedam Machaveru, you don't. In fact, that's the whole point of the discussion. The Gemara in Brachas regarding Chizki Yoha Melach and Yecheskel Hanavi, that Yecheskel was rebuking Chizkiya for not having kids. So he says, you know what, I was good, I had kids, but I see my descendants are going to be Rishayim. So the Navi rebuked him, that's not your business. But I don't get involved in the secrets of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So some of the first should point out, well, how do you watch the chat? Is no. Chesiel was right that the purpose of Puravu is to bring up religious children. If you know there's no chance of them being from, you shouldn't. But what was the issue? Number one is he didn't. It was a lousy nevuah. He didn't realize his kids are going to be chosen with tshuva. Or perhaps he was saying, you know, you're right, but we don't go. You know, we don't base things on what's based in shamayim. In other words, but if it was, um, but if it was. Derech Ateva, like the Jews who lived in under communist Russia, so then perhaps then in Achanamim, if you knew your kids can't be from, so maybe Chizki Yom Elk's title would be right. But either way, that's where Rabbi Yosef Engel writes here, that based on the Tosis, that you say, Ones Rachman Apatre, Amitzvah Adam Lamakam, and Amitzvah Adam Lamakam. There's a whole other discussion on that, Rav Shalom Azam, and the Raga Shavar, the Meshachachma, but not for now. And that's the Pshat over here, so. Onis Rachman Apatre, he says, if you're Patsa from the Chiyav, then there shouldn't be any Tashwoman. If you only Patsa from the Onis, so then there should be. So Rav Achana Wasman says, that's not true. We see clearly Onis is Chayav of Pesach Shani, because that's what the Gemara says. If you're Onis on Pesach Rishon, you are Chayav on Pesach Shani.